Public uh, Convention Visitors Bureau, and the gentleman that, that works there, the representative, uh, you know, white bread, you know, very, very Utah, uh, we ask a straightforward question. Is it possible to have an event of this magnitude, a bunch of Hispanic businesses coming to Salt Lake City? And then he thought for a second, he was like, absolutely, 100%. And we will support you throughout the whole process. So that was one of the initial meetings, and Don Salazar has been a great champion of, of, of our business community, of our chamber, and he single-handedly uh, has made this, this process possible. So let's give him a round of applause. Wow. Obviously, all the work that is done to have an event of this magnitude in, in, in Salt Lake, um, you know, had, 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 had the full support of the USHCC Board of Directors. Uh, Mark, thank you so much for considering us to, to be a, a player in, 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 in our country. Mm, nice little, a nice <laughs> little. <laughs> so, Mr. President, you were very presidential. <laughs> <laughs> I believe 15, 20 minute uh, speech. He's done. Back to the limo. We ran by the arm. We took him back to, to the limo. Back to the airport. On to, to Houston. Not only that, I mean, Mr. Mark Rodriguez, the next year, the event. And this is when we were already going with, with our with our convention buzz that, that we might be considered to be one of the cities. You know that, that, that we're being considered, and, and, and Mr. Rodriguez came in, and, and you absolutely killed it. Same limo. Same limo. <laughs> in our state, uh, so so we we, we, we matter as, as a community, and we're so excited. So I want to thank again the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for selecting Utah as as the city to host this convention. Welcome everyone. And before I finish, I just want to let you know that. Uh, we created a magazine to tell you what Utah's all about. We're not selling anything. We're not trying to get ad revenue. It's a gift to all of you, okay? Thank so you, you know what we're about, how our community is so diverse. And everything that's Utah, it's right here. So I brought enough copies for everyone, and we're going to be distributing this throughout the, the convention. Uh, Javier, thank you so much for, for everything. Thank you, Mark, Don. Thank you so much. Thank you. It goes a, a little farther than that. I think it's been nine years since we made our first initial uh, bid to uh, to get the chamber, the, the chamber national convention here. And I'm I'm talking about uh, from from the governor who was who has been kind enough to to yeah meet personally with with uh, Mark and he came last January and and uh, met with our board. Uh, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. And it goes on down from there, from local business leaders, from the Scott Andersons, to the uh, Greg Weingartners, to the Lou Kramers of, of our community, and, and Francisco, and, and you know, which I think is one of the most vibrant uh, chambers in the country, the Utah Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. The listening and the learning comes from a foundation of staff and comes from a lot of hard work and a lot of maturity. And I didn't quite get there, but I tried to listen as much as possible. And that's, that, those characteristics of your board, the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce boards, sets the foundation to set policy, make sure this guy uh, is, is hired or fired, whether he, he likes it or not. That's our, that's our role, and to set the financials. Those three responsibilities we were direct with and focused with for at least two years on the foundation that our chair emeritus, Nina Vaca, provided for us. The listening and the learning more than lead. At this time, your present CEO, Javier Palomares. Yeah. It's okay. This is okay. Yeah. Saw you. Uh, we saw you uh, in late 
September last year, and we're just going to give you a snippet of what's been going on. This is just about um, a third of what we've been engaged in. Before I begin, I want to clarify a couple things, and I want to kind of, I, I've been, I've had a front row seat of this thing, and uh, uh, it's amazing uh, what has happened. Um, but I remember our board meeting before the Miami, the Miami Convention. It was in July. We had to borrow an office of one of the business owners. He had turned the air conditioning off on the weekends to save money. <laughs> we had finger sandwiches. Uh, we could only afford Coke, and we had kind of lukewarm Coke, but thanks to Coca-Cola. Um, fast forward to our last board meeting was in this room. And Don was right. That is Murano glass, but that's insured for $4 million. It's over 100 years old. This room was designed after a castle in Belgium in one of the rooms that was a library in that castle. This room was designed after that. That is insured for a million dollars, and it was designed, the original design was up by Dr. Seuss, and that's also Murano Glass. What we're going to see here is just a quick illustration of what we're attempting to do to represent you, most of you. Because some of you don't want to be represented by us. Some of you would rather do your own thing. And that's fine. But I hope that most of you will recognize what we're attempting to do. So <clears throat> a year ago, um, <laughs> we introduced Goldman Sachs, as uh, Francisco mentioned, here in Salt Lake City. Uh, later that, uh, that, uh, that month, we were out in New York uh, doing a Hispanic Heritage Month. A symposium where we were able to connect some of our business owners with New York life. Uh, there's a gentleman that I think will be with us named uh, Hector Vinci. So if you meet him, we'll probably give him thanks because he is a one-man show over at New York Life and he is doing everything he can to allow our business owners to play part in his organization. Uh, later that month, I remember this day because it was my birthday, um, we spent the day uh, at the National Press Club calling for the end of the sequester and calling for the government to move forward and, and Congress to act later that afternoon, later that evening, uh, meetings with uh, former uh, Secretary of, uh, of Defense, Leon Panetta, also on the debt ceiling, and uh, the Secretary and myself did a press conference uh, the following day, a call for Congress <coughs> to move. Um, it's important that America recognizes that our concerns are not only about immigration. We care about the debt ceiling also. Thank We're you. getting impacted more than that. I don't deserve the thanks. Leon Panetta deserves the thanks because he called us and said, Javier, come and meet with me and we'll both talk at the National Press Club. Imagine what it takes for a guy that's been at that pinnacle to recognize the importance of the Hispanic community and say, you need to be beside me. That's where we need to be. Some people want to talk about bylaws. Do you want to talk about bylaws? Or do you want me talking with Leon Panetta about the debt ceiling? Which one would you prefer I'd be doing? Yeah. I'm sorry, which one? Yes. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So here we are at the Toyota. Uh, Toyota is a great corporation. They have helped us quite a bit. They're doing a lot of work with Hispanic businesses. They are moving their new North American headquarters from Torrance, California to Plano, Texas. There is a great opportunity in Texas for Latino-owned firms to play a part there. I am in very close contact with the people of Toyota and are doing everything they can to help, but I will be calling on some of you, um, and we're going to announce, uh, I believe later tomorrow, about an amazing opportunity that Toyota has made available to a Latina woman for the first time in Toyota's history. Our friends from El Paso, San Antonio, and Austin are here. This is an historic first. I want you to please do me a favor and pay attention to all of the historic firsts that you're going to be witnessing over the next couple of days. If you blink, you'll miss them. But you're going to see a history-making event after another. The Panetta, the, the press club, the debt ceiling, something happening with Toyota. The first Hispanic attorney general in the history of this state will be joining us. He's in that office because our association helped him get in that office. That's history. We will have the first, the only the second Latino Secretary of, uh, of HUD in the country's 234-year history 
will be joining us. The first woman to ever serve as SBA administrator after the post has been elevated to a direct report to the President of the United States will be joining us. The most powerful woman in American politics will be joining us, second in succession to the President. There's gonna be one after another historic piece of something happening, and I hope that you guys will pay attention and recognize when you walk away that this is all for you and because of you. This wouldn't be happening if you weren't doing what you're doing. America is waking up, and you're the alarm clock. Yes. And I want you to kind of keep that in mind. For the first time ever, the, the Reverend, uh, a Hispanic was allowed to join the Reverend on the stage. Reverend Jackson and the woman to his, uh, to our right, is a woman named Josette Wright from the NMSBC. The African American community, headed up by Josette Wright, has been a phenomenal partner to the USACC. When Arizona did what they did eight years ago, about five years ago, Josette Wright called me and she said, if you don't go to Arizona, I don't go to Arizona. It cost us a fortune, but we boycotted Arizona and both of us pulled our convention from Phoenix, Arizona because of what they did. That's Josette Wright. <laughs> The short little genius on the right-hand side with the little librarian glasses. If you see her, pat her on the back and thank her because she stuck with our community when the chips were down. That's the kind of leadership that Josette Wright represents. Uh, on the far right, uh, we went to Mexico City for the second time uh, at the request of the, uh, of the government, and we represented the uh, Ernst & Young Global Growth uh, Summit in Mexico City. We've also been to Spain, we've been to London, we've been to Israel, we've been to Colombia, and I believe we're going to Argentina but we're thinking about that. The message has always been, if you took the Latino community in America and you created a country, we would be a bigger country, a stronger country, a wealthier country, a more educated country than Mexico, than Spain, than Argentina, than Brazil, than any Latin American country on the globe. We are the power of the Hispanic market in the United States. And my message to them is, we need to work with you, okay, get pena, if you're doing business in the United States and you're not working with us. And so we're, we're looking to break through that as, as, as best we can. Uh, the swearing in of Maria Contreras Sweet. We worked very hard to put this woman in this role. You should know, another historic first, by the way, not only the first Latina to be in that role after it was elevated to a secretary position. She's actually the secretary. She's referred to as an administrator. But she reports directly to the President of the United States. So when she goes to like her staff meetings, <laughs> the guy at the end of the table is the President of the United States. You should know that we lobbied very hard on her behalf. And the results, the first time in history, no, I don't know if it's the first time in history, it's the first time in the President, in President Obama's um, uh, administration that they have had an, un, an absolutely uncontested nomination. Nobody contested her. She was 100% approved. First time ever in his administration. Nomination and approval in his administration. He saw firsthand the power of this community when we get behind a leader and he called and said, I can't believe it. You guys broke a record. It happened in record time and there wasn't one dissenting vote on that woman. Why? Porque es Latina because she was the best American candidate for that job. And we're all going to get to hear from her uh, later on. Uh, some School of International Affairs. I don't know how the hell I got on that panel, but the idea now for us, at the advice of many people that are around us, is that we start talking to young people. Not just all of us who are here now, but going back 10, 15 years talking to the next wave of leadership. And by the way, their view is incredibly different. They, they, it's a, the next wave is gonna freak us all out. Uh, uh, I was really busy, I had time to have a baby while I was gone. Uh, this is the Western Republican Conference, how, how, I am, how that picture ended up there. But I was asked to come out here and, uh, and speak to all the leadership of the Republican Party a few months ago. On the upper right hand side is Griselda here. Griselda Aldrete is a phenomenal young woman from Milwaukee. If you have a chance, 
please go say hello to her. I had a blast going out and, uh, and speaking at their event. Um, lower right hand side, Comcast Diversity Council. Um, every week, there are at least four trips. Um, and every week, we're in the middle of something. But the one constant is that we're always talking about the collaborative spirit and the power of our community and how we're here to work together in harmony, collaborating, moving our country forward, and recognizing that America sees the rest of our community through our actions. As we go, the Hispanic community goes. If all we can do is argue with each other, Frank, then that's what America sees. But if we collaborate with each other, you're real. Then that's what America sees. It's y'all's choice. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Because people like Asusana and Cindy will kick my butt if I don't, first of all. But more importantly, because people like Mark and the Doctor need me to continue to do that. It's important that they recognize the power of the Hispanic community. It's important that in the heart of Texas, they recognize that we matter. We may not, we may not have it yet. We're going to get there real quick with people like Mark at the helm. And so I want you to kind of look at all this stuff, not just because of the event, but the, the, the constant messaging of the fact that we're making something positive happen in our country, and we're taking control of our destiny. So obviously, Julian Castro on the upper left hand. If you haven't met him, please try to make a chance to at least come shake his hand. At the ripe old age of 39, 39, Stanford undergrad, I believe, and a Harvard MBA and a Harvard law degree. I love my, I mean, imagine that. <laughs> his birthday was last week. We were texting him back and forth. I call him kid, and he calls me sir. I don't know how that happened, but it's all completely backward. Uh, first large public engagement. He's coming all the way from Washington. He will he speak here, stay for one event, and then fly right back. Um, everybody knows that everybody's talking about the young guy. So for him to come back to his community is illustrative of the kind of man that Julian Castro is. You know how many people have asked him to come talk? They've had over 430 <laughs> requests. He chose one, this one. He's coming back to his community. And I hope you guys, when he takes that stage, Frankly, because this guy called him. When he takes that stage, I hope every one of you jumps out of your heels and jumps out of your seats and gives him a nice welcome, a Latino welcome, the kind that he deserves for coming out and dealing with us first. Joe Biden, the swearing in, uh, with an historic event. Again, uh, I was talking to a young uh, New York Times uh, columnist, and she said, well, you know, he's actually the second Latino to ever be HUD secretary. And I said, I'm sorry, young lady, how long has this country been? 230 something years. So we're averaging like uh, every 116 years we get one. That's historic. I don't know what you're talking about, young lady, but to me, that's pretty historic. Uh, lower left hand corner. It's true. Again, along the lines of historic firsts. Sad. Uh, I had the privilege of doing the commencement speech and receiving, of all things, an honorary doctorate. I can't believe that happened. And, and I, I sent a big, huge poster to Mark. Uh, and now he has to call me doctor because I have to call him Mr. Chairman. So it takes us like five minutes to say good morning, Mr. Doctor. <laughs> and I have the daughters call me Dr. Paul right now. I can't. Um, but what's really important here is that this was the first time in the school's 173 year history that a Latino had been allowed to be a convention speaker. <laughs> Francisco, Don, Robert Rendon, and people like that agitating, <laughs> articulating, advocating here in Salt Lake. That never would have happened. And I thought, well, you know, that's cool, you know, 173 years. Why don't I, let's go check it out. Right. So I come in, they give me last year's commencement speech brochure. And of course, I go to look and see who the commencement speaker was last year, because I'm thinking, I gotta be better than that person, right? right. It was Robert Redford. <laughs> By the way, I can't you say. looked like it. I, I, think, I think I did better. But anyway, first time in history. First time in history. That's what.
what I hope that you guys recognize. We are changing history. You are changing history. Um, dealing with Congress and Senate, talking about corporate diversity. Lower left-hand corner, Politico. Uh, the political panel was widely covered. It was Maria Contreras Sweet's first time coming out. If you get a chance to see that video, this woman's amazing. Within, within, within 90 days, she had an amazing plan, and they are working overtime. By the way, people don't realize that <clears throat> I found a common thread among the real leaders in our community. I can say this about Don, I can say this about Mark, I can say this about Nina Vaca, I know this about Carmen, I can say this about Maria Contreras. To a person, they're constantly looking for some other Latino to help. Sometimes me va bien, sometimes no me va bien. The first thing Maria did, she took this brilliant young woman that worked for me, named Valentina, and, and drafted her and put her on a national level, and now Valentina Pereira is managing all media for the Small Business Administration. First time in history, first time in history, is Latina, and she's under the age of how old, I don't know how old she is, but she's 20, what, five? Realize that this is happening every day, and that same common thread of people like Maria, like Mark, like Don, like Nina. Every day I hear about something they're doing for someone else. I spent an evening yesterday with Carmen, and she's got four young women that she's coaching on her own time. That's the power of our community. We have learned a long time ago that if we don't help each other, nobody's gonna help us. But fortunately, today, we have people like Maria who can call the governor in Maryland and say, I want this young dreamer from Venezuela. Stand up, young man. I want this young dreamer right here from Venezuela. To <laughs> and guess what the governor does? Who's seated right there? That's the power of our community. And I am one tiny little piece, one millionth of the piece. It's really these people who never get up and tell you about it. But it's my job to remind you about it. It's happening every day. Uh, we joined the National 4-H uh, Club this year. As you know, every year we find it's doing something useful for our community. Uh, we've done this with the Boys and Girls Club. We've done this with the Girls Club, the Boy Scouts. This year is the National 4-H Club. Um, the largest youth organization in the world, by the way. By way of example, the Girl Scouts have, I believe, like three million young ladies join. The Boy Scouts have about four. They have 12 million all over the world. The fastest growing segment, Latin America. Mm -hmm. Their president will be joining us for one of our events. Um, just real quickly, some media highlights. Uh, again, in, in, in the same tone of trying to stay at the top of the political and national narrative, uh, we've done stuff with ABC News talking uh, with President Bush, a known Republican, about the power and influence of America's immigrant community. Not from a civil rights perspective, it's all about economics. I think most of you have seen the book that we co-authored with the George W. Bush Institute. Yeah. Hot off the presses. They called us, I believe, last week, last Wednesday. They want to do a second edition. They've been approached by about 18 other nonprofit organizations, all of them, uh, none of them Hispanic. And they said, no thank you, 18 times. They came back to us and they said, the second edition, expanded edition, will be with the USA. How are we doing? Can you characterize and can you catalog the growth of the organization? And we use a company called Meltwater. Meltwater is a media evaluation firm. It's a software company. And uh, just off the top of my head, their clients include Nike, uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Campbell Soup, Exxon, and other major corporations. We pay Melt Meltwater, like everybody does, because it's important that we be able to, to tell you, hey, we're making a mark. We're actually moving the needle. These are the media impressions. I'm sorry, this is the earned media. So when we started in 2010 on the lower left-hand corner, we were at about $900,000 uh, uh, worth of value. Not that we paid it, but that that's the kind of coverage, if I had to pay it, that's what it would cost me. Define earned media. Earned media, unpaid earned media, unpaid. is coverage that you yeah, get right. that you didn't have to pay for. Okay. So there are two factors to earned media. Did you get coverage 
And what's it positive coverage? Because you want coverage. The perfect combination is a lot of coverage and it's all positive. Right. You want a lot of positive. Right. You can see here the trend. These are numbers that are audited by our organization, by our, our, our board approves them and sees them in our auditing. You can see the growth. Last year, at the end of the year, we tallied up all of the media impressions and we gave it the evaluation and gave it a dollar value, Meltwater did. And the dollar value was $90,393,204. Second part of the equation, second part of the equation, okay, great. A lot of people are hearing about you. That's great, Javier. But what kind of media? Do they like what they're hearing? Through our friends at Johnson & Johnson, I don't think Ruben is here. Uh, Ruben Taborda, our financier, a wonderful partner of the organization, a great counselor of mine personally. Johnson & Johnson uh, uh, does this and they evaluate the favorability of the Johnson & Johnson brand. They have over 120 brands. And they went ahead and threw ours in. And so here's the sentiment. 11%, 87%, Twenty percent. When you're looking at media, you take the top two echelons, the top two matrices, the, the, the 87 and the 11, and that's considered positive. It's not negative. And our positive rating, now I worked in corporate America for 20 years, and I was in marketing, sales, and advertising. And I prayed for the day when my company's rating was 85%. Our favorability, our favorability rating is 98%. So not only is the country hearing about us, but what they hear and what they believe after they read it is 98% of the time favorable. It's about damn time that we change the narrative in this country and we change the dialogue and we redefine our community and put the positive foot forward. This is proof positive that we're doing exactly that. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is working uh, very closely in local communities, as many have. This isn't like a re revelation that came to us. Many have re recognized this, but we've just followed suit. That in local communities, it's really the mayor that drives right. business. It's really uh, uh, um, the mayor that's, that's making things happen. The guy who taught me that was the guy on the left. And him and Mark kind of talked to me about, wait a minute, there's all the stuff that happens on the federal level, but there's this whole ecosystem in this city called San Antonio, and the king of San Antonio is the mayor. And the ability for us to begin to really drive contracting and relationship building, whether it's in San Antonio, Los Angeles, or Miami, or Austin, is to work with the local mayor and right. ensure that that mayor knows who we are, knows what we care about, knows where our business owners are, knows what we're doing, knows that we vote, knows that we have the money to support. And so we've started a, a strategy and it's called Celebrating America's Business Future. We give an award to mayors that we believe really understand the Latino community and doing anything they can to help us grow our businesses. And these are the first three. Look for us to do more along those, along those lines because we believe that as a local chamber leader, if you don't have your governor behind you and you don't have your mayor behind you, good luck because that's just the way it is. So my job is to come in and say, you're not just talking to us who stand on Fort Worth. She's one of 200 of us. And she represents maybe 5,000 businesses out of 3.4 million businesses. So if you support her, you support me. You take her off, you take me off. That makes a difference, and these guys are paying attention. So look for us to do more and more of that as we move forward work at the really local community level. And we'll reach out to the chamber leaders as I, as I have with Mark, um, as I have with Omar. Uh, and actually Omar was brilliant in helping me through this and that's how we ended up in Chicago with Mayor Emanuel who now is, the, he's like the tech buddy now. We're like, we're like, he's got like a bromance going. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're taking funding and through the generosity, and I'm just using a, a Wells Fargo illustrative, it's happening obviously with Visa. How many of y'all, by show of hands, how many of you received a Visa check from me in the last 24 months? Raise your hand. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah. I think we sent out, how many, how much 
about eight hundred thousand dollars worth of funding that went out to local chambers. Now, every Saturday morning, Mark and I, we have a few traditions. Some I can share. One of them was that every Saturday morning, I call the first thing in the morning, and we talk about who was getting a check today, and I would write a personal check and say, you know, I want to, you know, I want to thank you for being part of the visa acceptance program. I think in San Antonio, you guys looked at twenty-one thousand dollars in San Antonio, and twenty thousand, nineteen thousand. I don't do as much as San Antonio, but that day, that day. <laughs> So the idea is to take the funding and try to funnel it as quickly as we can to you, staff. Now, understand, my staff is nine people. That's wrong. Nine people. So our job is to take as much of the funding as we can, con permiso, we have to get approval from the corporate friend, and funnel it down to the local chambers. We've done that in Philly, we've done that in Chicago, we've done that in Maryland, we've done that in Austin, we've done that in Fort Worth, we've done that in El Paso, and all over. See, we will be doing more of that as much as we can. It is not our decision. This money is given to us by a corporation and we have to get their permission. Message is, if you see Visa people or Wells Fargo people, give them a big fat hug and a big fat kiss because they approve us doing that and the funding goes to you. This is an example of something we did uh, just last year for the first time. Dollars uh, were the Houston Hispanic Chamber, the Chamber of Metro Orlando and Sacramento each got a $20,000. That's why they're smiling that big. <laughs> the second tier, smaller chambers, uh, got $10,000 fund, and that was Utah Hispanic Chamber, Fort Worth, North Carolina, and uh, and uh, network uh, and, and entrepreneurial network of, of Wisconsin. So the idea is to take the money and give it directly to our members so that they can go do what they need to do. I have enough stuff going on in my life. I don't need to figure out what your priorities are. What I need to figure out is to give you the money so you can execute your priorities. And that's what that was. So if you see Wells Fargo, this company continues to believe in us. And man, they write the check. They just, they write the check. At the end of the day, with voice, he's got five women around him 24 seven. Uh, me, because I've been married to, to a woman for 32 years and she won't let me do it. And both of us, because we know Nina Baca, he almost got out of I mean, that just is no way out. Um, we created uh, the uh, At the Table Initiative, uh, led, led by two brilliant young women on our own team, uh, who most of you know. Uh, Eliza, seated right there in the corner. Eliza, please stand up for our event. And we Michelle Desengani, who's a brand new member of the team. That's great. We need to do that. We help a woman out. Do you help a family? Do you help a community? Do you help a neighborhood? Right. Do you help a town? Right. Hell, you help a country. Yeah. So we're going to do everything we can, at least while I'm in this role, to continue to push on something that grabs the entrepreneurial power of the Latinas within us and around us and harnesses that so that we can continue to build on this momentum that Hispanic women have in our community. Let me, now, give you, let me give you an example of, of, of good stuff that happens. I make every chamber training institute dinner. Try and make as many workshops as I can. As your chairman, I don't, I don't need the microphone. I just show up to say thank you. Last night, there were no chairs left for the chairman of the USC. <laughs> <laughs> what a great problem to have. That's right. I can, I'll be proud today. I'll be proud at the gate. But last night, I was proud because two other board members and myself, there were no chairs available. What a good problem to have. Thank you. So we solicited the help of some amazing organizations, obviously the Kauffman Foundation, the largest and most influential foundation, uh, I think in the world, certainly in America, in terms of entrepreneurialism, Google, Facebook, Cosmo Latina, Donald Bank, et cetera. The idea being, that we always talk about, and it's always in my elevator speech, that Latino-owned businesses are going at a rate of three to one compared to the general market. That's true. The <clears throat> Department of Commerce will back me up on that all day long. But if you took Latinas out, and you studied them by themselves, and compared their growth to the general market, that growth rate jumps to mm -hmm. five to one. So whether we want to admit it or not, if we are the spear, the <laughs> point of the spear are not the guys, it's the women that are at the point of our Those are the facts. Those are the facts. And that's why 
when we throw an event about women, the most powerful elected <laughs> official, female official in the history of America says, oh yeah, hell yeah, I'll go take that prize, I'll fly out with all my security detail, and I'll accept that award because they recognize <coughs> the power of our women. By the way, she won't tell you, but the first woman to ever join our board that has a company that does more than $1 billion worth of revenue is Carmen Castillo. <laughs> That's the largest Hispanic-owned business in the history of the United States. And she woke up, flew in from God knows where, and seated front row. So if you're not getting it yet, man, you really please need to stop and thank people like Carmen. Because let me tell you, she was telling me about her calendar last week. And it was King this, and Amir that, and Princess that, and Duke this, and Prime Minister this. And last night she's with Pearl Javier Palomares down at a local bistro having a you know a so so dinner. Yeah. On them. Again, the amazing work that's being done by Eliza and Michelle, a two woman team that is just taking the, the country by storm. BizFest is probably one of the most heartwarming things we do. You should know, BizFest doesn't make this money. BizFest costs me money. And every year, just like you, we have bills to pay. We have to decide. What are we going to do this year? What are we going to leave behind? We'll never leave this fest behind because if we do that, we're basically saying we're leaving our kids behind. So if it, there is a this fest in your city, please make the time to stop in, say hello, give those children a few words of wisdom. You would be amazed at how impactful that is to those kids. Please. Um, and by the way, the last one we had, or that I was able to coach, go to us, we sent out those kids in Fort Worth. It was amazing, it was so touching. Uh, thank you for your, for your help on that, I'll just send out those kids. Legislative Summit, you know, it's really important to keep score. And one of the things that's indicative of how well we're doing is how we attract the political leadership of this country. And it's important that we attract on both ends of the spectrum, right? You don't just want to attract Democrats or just Republicans. So we keep score. When we had our last legislative summit, many of you were there. Uh, we had 62 members of Congress, 30 Republicans, and 32 Democrats. That's pretty well, I think, about Dallas. We also had Paul Ryan, you know, on, on the lips of everybody as, a, as a, a potential presidential candidate. We had the leader of the Republican National Convention. They're telling me I'm running out of time. Uh, we had Governor O'Malley, who if I have anything to do with it, will run for president. We had uh, 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 Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi, and we had an amazing, I think, delivery of an unscripted speech uh, by Joe Biden, which I will never forget. That was an amazing speech. Uh, so it really speaks to the breadth of the reach of the association, and for us it's really about you know, them understanding there was 15 of you that were allowed to meet privately with Joe Biden. There will be 12 of you that are allowed to meet privately with Nancy Pelosi so that she hears from you, not from me, what's important and how we're working together to move things forward. So our job is to make sure that they hear directly from the people who are creating the jobs, paying the taxes, moving the innovation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Hill Day, we spend a lot of time on the Hill, obviously making sure that they hear our concerns, usually around business. A uh, total of 57 meetings were scheduled, uh, and uh, you can see the numbers here. I think it's fairly impressive. Uh, John Cornyn pulled us aside later and said that this was the most effective uh, body that he had seen in his 19, 19 years or his 19 years at it. Uh, and he said, Javier, you, you wowed everybody. That it was it was amazing. He said it was we've never seen anything like it. Everybody's talking about it. Um, uh, John McCain, obviously a decorated war hero, joined us. Uh, we did something different uh, last year and looked for us to continue to do that, and that's really working with journalists and ensuring that the people who tell the story, the historians, the guys who get in front of the mic and tell CNN or ABC or Political, or in this case, this week, the Atlantic Magazine, what they saw with their own eyes. 
And so uh, you've, got the, you've got Jim Avila there from ABC News, a senior correspondent for ABC News, and all these other players from Politico and, and Huffington Post. The idea is I can tell you something over the phone or I can bring you and you can see my constituency. And it makes a huge difference. And uh, they're all covering this now. So much so that Steve uh, Clemens, the senior editor of the Atlantic Magazine, will be hosting voluntarily on his time the CEO panel series. Imagine that. I would doubt it if the Atlantic Magazine writes something about what they saw here. Uh, here's what you should expect. Obviously, Chamber Training Institute, thank you all for participating. As I told you yesterday, it's the heart of what we do. You, or at least the ones of you who work with us, are the power behind this organization. We cease to exist if you don't participate. And our job, my personal job, is to make sure that I represent the interests of the majority of you. There's always gonna be one, or maybe two, or maybe three, that don't agree. You know what, that's the beauty of America. You don't agree, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing beautiful thing. But I hope that 80, 90, 95% of you agree with me and you do see what we're doing and it does make a difference to you and you do feel just a little bit of pride in your heart that we're trying to do the right thing. And so our job is to make sure we keep you there happy and that you continue to inform our strategy as we move forward. Um, obviously you're going to hear from these individuals I already mentioned, Maria Pombrera Sweet. Uh, and Nancy Pelosi uh, on Monday uh, at the luncheon. Uh, Monday, later on, the CEO panel series, we've got three CEOs. Joe Alvarado, if you don't know him, he is the world's best kept secret. This guy is a Latino CEO of a $7 billion company. That's big. Um, and he's joining us. Uh, Commercial Metals Corporation out of um, Irving, Irving, Texas. Uh, he'll be with us, so um, uh, the executive vice chairman and former CEO of Overstock.com, Jonathan Johnson, a Utah boy, will be with us, and Scott Anderson, the gentleman who paid for that documentary that hopefully we'll get a chance to see, will be with us as well. And I mentioned Steve Clemens, the editor at large of The Atlantic, will be moderating that CEO panel. I hope all of you can make it to that. It's really a premier event. These guys don't give away that kind of time. They're, and they're donating that time for us to kind of hear from them. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, they're followed by the Million Dollar <coughs> Breakfast on Tuesday morning. Kathleen Martinez, if you don't know her, uh, she works for British Petroleum. BP is the number one investor, period, in energy and en energy infrastructure in the United States. $55 billion investment. Uh, and she is the point of their sphere. Latina as the day is long from uh, Houston and she will be the uh, Corporate Advocate of the Year. Next year's convention will be in Houston, Texas, hosted by BP. So um, look forward to, uh, to hearing more from her. American Airlines is Corporation of the Year this year. Um, it, it, th this is an amazing brand that continues to do everything they can to, not only in terms of uh, procurement, but diversity all the way around. And so uh, we've honored them um, among, I believe, 53 entrants. Um, HBE Elite Luncheon, these are the superstars of our show uh, during this uh, event. Uh, Eligio Cedeno, if you don't know him, the quietest guy you'll ever meet. Um, he literally is a, a living testament to Will. Um, I don't want to divulge the whole story. I believe there are two movies being written about, uh, put together about him. He was incarcerated in his home country, um, made it to America. He owns a company called Bennett. And it's very dedicated to the idea that Hispanics should have wonderful, particularly our children, wonderful programming exactly. in bilingual uh, approach. Uh, Veme and uh, Eligio Cedeño, an amazing, amazing man, member of the USHC. Obviously, Monica Lozano, also in the media, the first Latina ever to break through, sits on the board of Disney, the board of Bank of America. I mean, this woman's a rock star. Uh, been at it for many, many years. Uh, and of course, uh, our good, good friend, Governor Gary Herbert, who has welcomed everybody to the state. Uh, and then finally, the big show, uh, the closing gala will be uh, the Honorable Julian Castro. 
That's a wrap. That's what we've been doing all year. I hope that that meets with your approval. <laughs> Agree sometimes, mm -hmm. and that, that I believe in. I've been involved in the chamber since 1989. I've been around my ex wife, which is a good friend of one of the first three women that was the first <laughs> three Latinas on the board of directors. And you guys have moved tremendously, and you're doing an outstanding job. But we also need to remind sometimes that we need to get back to basics on the values. You mentioned this is not a time. What we do, and what I like to propose, is that you give us procedures. Because the only change that I can see myself that I'm interested in it is on the right to elect the representative from our regions. Yes. That's about it because we need to know who represents With all the respect, I think that you have an understanding work. And I think that you are the utmost Latino that I can ever see. When I grow up, I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, we do need to have respect for the time and the way that we can express, and that's what we're doing very respectfully. And we have the right, as members, to expect at least the right to elect the representatives from our region. I'm in California. We have California, no, uh, Nevada, and Hawaii. They and have Washington. Each, not, Washington. In, not in Region 1. Oh. We have those three. Those two have one chamber. Sorry, we that. have That's over 65 active yeah, chambers, and we have over 98 the, Hispanic chambers. Which of those oh. We want to work together. We are here because we believe in what the you do. We believe map. in being part of the solution. So, which is respectfully, I, I, I request. It, this is not the time. Let's go do it right now because we need to be positive. But we do need the procedures and how do we can go back to elect <coughs> or represent it. You are a stockholder that's voicing an opinion. Thank you. I'm going to go, Casey, I'm going to go Cindy, and then I'm going to go three hands back, middle, front, over here in a minute. I'm from the El Paso Hispanic Chamber. Yeah, yeah, El Paso. Thank you all for your leadership. It's been awesome. I appreciate it. I know it's a lot of calamity and no return. But I have two critical things that we need USHCC to help us step up with. Where are we with immigration reform? Important community, El Paso, Texas, we're getting hammered yep. on this border security and immigration. And I've got lots of stuff to share with you. Secondarily, if you could get to Mr. Castro, we need to talk to him about housing authorities all across the country. They are not, by law, have to deal at all with any of 